the web is transitioning, and so is this class. We're getting a prerequisite for this class that isn't being fully enforced so that people will have to learn basic HTML before they come here. And I think that's a good thing. But not everybody who's in here this semester has that prerequisite met. So what I'm going to do is take you through a really rapid walkthrough of the most important HTML and CSS concepts to understand before you begin making websites. You need to know what the web is capable of before you can start designing for it. And I'm going to be working mostly in split view here, largely because it will show you what I'm doing right away. Okay, so I'm in Dreamweaver. I just did a basic, and I'll just walk you through what I did. Just did a basic new HTML with no layout, and I hit create. Um, I'm going to set this one as XHTML. Tradi transitionally, you'll notice there's lots of different doc types. When CS6, which is the version that I'm using, came out, this was pretty much the standard. We're going to transition <coughs> to HTML5 in the new video, but I want to show you a few different old ways of doing page layout. And the reason that I'm going through this is because page layout is complex and you need to really understand how the code works to understand how to design a website that works well. So I'm using Dreamweaver and I'm going to go back and forth between the HTML and the layout page. I'm not really getting heavily into CSS, that's cascading style sheets at this point. I just want to show you the basic foundations of a page. Now the title section here will actually change the title here and what that becomes, I'm using um, preview in Firefox because you really need to see it in a browser to see what it does. So when I put in the title you see Mary's sample layout appears here. Now one of the hard things in design is that we have come from being able to design for screens when I first started in the late 1990s when I started doing web design you had the options of a 15, 17, or 19 inch screen unless you had lots of money to spend on a big monitor you might have a 21 inch screen. Today you have to design on devices on, to make things look good on phones, tablets, laptops, computers, large screen TVs, you actually have to sort of be aware of your environment. And when we were coming up in programming, I'm not going to write all the code for this because it's kind of tedious and you haven't learned any yet, so I'm going to flip over to Design View for just a second. And I'm going to insert a table. And typically, when I designed back in the 90s, I would create a table with three rows and either two or three columns. <clears throat> and typically, I would like to set my table width to 80%. Um, normally, I would do this with a borderless table, but I want you to see what's going on. So I'm going to set this with a border thickness of two pixels. And I wouldn't worry about the caption or the summary at that time. So I'm going to hit OK. And this was my basic page layout, and this is where I would start. Because then in Dreamweaver or in code, you can go through and you can combine different cells. And so I would go into my table, and I would merge cells. And then I would go into my table here and I would merge cells and you might wonder why I have the three at the bottom and I would typically go here and I would merge cells and this would become the basic foundation for my web page because when I did web pages I typically but not always would set them up in this manner 
So I'm going to set in here. I'm going to edit. I'm not using any classes or styling. I'm doing HTML, which is not good current layout, but it is what we did at the time. So I'm going to put in um, page properties here. This is actually we're moving into CSS, and this is ahead of what you need to be able to do. But I just want to make my appearance done in HTML. CSS is right here. and see what you can do. We're going to change our it's been so long since I did this actually. I'm going to come back to CSS. I'm going to change my font size to 35 pixels. That's the only thing I'm going to do here just because I want to be able to show you what's going to go where. And so in my initial layout I would have put in my logo up here. I would have put in a masthead here and frequently what I would do is I would have links or buttons at the bottom of the masthead and over on the side I would have local navigation and these links these are your actually your top level navigation typically your front page wouldn't have the side but if you went down into one specific category you might have subcategories and this would have, this is your footer, this would have contact information, and a simple text site map. And usually people would do that by doing things like home, and then they'd use the pipe symbol, space, space, um, other other, other, and you would typically center all of this which it's not letting you do in this version because that's again a CSS property because it has removed that. It used to be that you did all of your formatting with HTML and the cool thing was that if this didn't give you a complex enough design you could insert a table inside of the cell of the other table allowing you to create extremely complex designs they got really ugly I don't mean ugly on the front I mean ugly in the back okay so I just took out the two nested tables this isn't bad, and this is usually as much as I would go into because I'm kind of a usability specialist. I've studied usability. I've done some work as a usability specialist, and I like to keep my pages simple. This is not bad as far as tables layout, but once you start getting into more complex tables, watch how the code changes. It just put that in. and you really could keep going into infinity. It's not practical to do that, but it let you <clears throat> take extremely tight control over placement of things on the page. Now why would anybody design like that? Well, because it was the only choice we had. Initial page, pages in the 1990s were really mostly done by programmers because you had to hand code. So you'd have to be able to look at this and think in this and that didn't work for most people so what you'd really want to do is use something like Dreamweaver which is a WYSIWYG what you see is what you get program and when Dreamweaver came in, which has been around for years, it was originally owned by Macromedia, and I've been using it back since then. When Dreamweaver came in, it let programmers, or actually it let designers, do some fairly complex programming for page layout, just sort of the way I did, where you just dropped in tables. And you could use this for complex layout. 
because in HTML you can left align things, center or right align them. Well, if you can break it down in left, right, or center line in each cell, you can create some really fantastic layouts. And then you can set backgrounds for each cell. And it's a pretty amazing what we were actually able to accomplish at that point in time. So let's take a quick look at our code. In the Dreamweaver class, you're not really going to be, well, in the web design class, you're not really going to be hand coding, but you should be able to read it and know what's going on. So we here at the top, this is metadata. It describes our page. They have the title of our page. We put in some styles here. This is a cascading style, sheet style, font size of 35. Um, and then we've got a table and a table and a table. And we put content in each cell of the table. And that turns into this. And not that this is a really great web page layout, but you can see how you can simply build it. And we're going to start coding some pages. We're not going to go back to this level. But I want you to know how things used to be designed because chances are pretty high that at some point in your career we're in a transition right now. There's a lot of the web that still has this kind of layout. You may be asked to redesign a site that was designed this way. And this is no longer the correct way to design. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to dump it because I want you to learn a little bit of hand coding. So I'm going to go back into the split view and show you what you really need to do to do some basic hand coding. I'm going to put in our doc type. This tells the browser what sort of HTML, what version I'm using to create my page. And so here I use doc type HTML and that tells me that it's HTML5 because it's greatly simplified. And I actually start my HTML document, which is HTML. And if you're doing this right, you're going to declare the language equal to English because it is correct form to tell your browser what language you're using. And then inside that, the first part of our web page we have is the head section. And I'm simplifying things. I'm leaving out a few things that are commonly put in. The, the web page will still work. I'll get into the other stuff later. Dreamweaver generally puts it in for you. But the head section usually contains information about our page, things like a title, Mary's sample page. And as you saw, that appears up here. That means it will appear when we publish our page. And then we could put in some other stuff, usually a care set, tell us that we're use, what character set we're using. We can put in keywords. There's all sorts of metadata, data about the page we could put in there. But I'm just going to close the head section because I'm trying to keep this very simplified. The next thing you would have to do in hand coding is put in the body. And this is where you create the part of the web page that your user sees. And we're going to do the most famous and standard web page of all. Nothing here, not just web page programming. Typically when you're programming, you're going to declare text as an H1 through H6. This is a header tag and they can range in size and it's partly about the formatting but it's really about the importance and make sure you properly close it that makes it take effect. Whenever you're writing tags your opening tag and your closing tag are almost the same except the closing tag has this slash right here and it needs to be in place for it to work properly. You can have header levels for, or heading levels from H1 to H6. So I'm just put in H3 and each, the higher the number, H6 is less important than H1. And it also comes with some automatic default formatting that goes with it. But normally when you're writing in an HTML, you're going to be writing with a paragraph. And you'll write a bunch of stuff in there. This is my really nifty paragraph. And this is what creates your page. Now there's no real layout here. And if we're going to do the traditional one, here's the traditional one. We could also do, typically again you're going to do paragraph, um, you can also do some emphasis here. We're going to put in strong. Strong means typically it's going to translate as bold, but it means it's more important than the surrounding words. Hello world. 
Why? Because, well, that's what programmers do. When they learn a new language, they put in hello world. And there's all sorts of cool formatting things that you can do with text, but they're not that important. When you have Dreamweaver, we're going to get really heavily into them, not so much in the hand coding aspect. Because what it, with the hand coding aspect, what I really want you to do is learn about how this page layout works. So this is your really, really basic page layout where we haven't defined anything. I'm going to go ahead into part two on this where we're going to introduce CSS for page layout and semantic markup and how they go together because typically you're going to want to break your page into different pieces that you can then organize. So I'll be back at you with that in the next video.